I wasn't going to do a video over this festive season, but sometimes people use Christmas to bury weird or bad news. And I think I found an example of burying extremely strange news on the NASA website. The best way to describe about what I'm going to show you is from a Hollywood phrase, and that is, darn it. They've gone and done it. The stupid, crazy, irresponsible bunglers. They've finally done it. What I'm about to share with you is a short infomercial made by Goddard and Nasser about something which is world shattering. Watch this. Scientists have discovered a human made barrier around Earth protecting against the natural particle radiation in space. They believe the bubble was formed by very low frequency waves, or VLFs. VLFs have been found to interact with the particles in space, affecting how and where they move. VLFs are used for radio communications, including with submarines, because they can penetrate deep into the ocean. The waves can also travel far into the environment around Earth. By understanding more about how VLF transmissions help shape our space environment, we learn more about this complex region surrounding us. The more we know, the more situational awareness we have to protect our satellites from natural radiation in space. And that makes me really angry, not only because of what they've done, and we'll discuss exactly what they have done in a minute, but the way that they presented it as a bland piece of, hey, look at what scientists have done. Maybe it's a good thing from NASA. So what's this all about? Well, it's a real bugbear of mine. For 65 years, mankind has tried to mess around with our planet. Why? Well, first of all, because we can, but really because of this. When Sputnik 1 launched, you can't overestimate how shocking it was to the US because it meant the Soviets had a intercontinental ballistic missile system. And that's exactly what they were working on. Both the Soviets and the US were building ballistic missile systems to deliver death to their own enemies. And where did they get the idea from? Well, of course, from these people. This, of course, was the V2 ballistic rocket that was launched against England in World War II. And what happened to them? Well, it's a fantastic story. America got the manpower, the brains, the Werner von Braun's of the V2 program, but Russia got most of the unfired V2 rockets that launched excuse the pun their space program ahead of the americans because they had the german rockets to experiment with and what were they both doing well first of all you have to understand what a ballistic missile is it ballistic is the shape of a curve a takeoff a supersonic cruise and then an uncontrolled 
drop to earth and that's what the v2 weapon did the question is how far up would it go instead of firing it at poor england let's just launch it vertically and see if it can get into orbit 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 Zero, rocket away. Now, radar tracking devices swing into operation. Four seconds have elapsed. The rocket is now one mile up. Its sound is still deafening to the ear. Telescopic cameras follow the course of the missile. 60 seconds have elapsed. The rocket is now 20 miles up and traveling at 3,000 miles an hour. Well, it didn't. It's just not a big enough rocket. But using the design, the liquid fuel design, Russia managed to make bigger ones and launched Sputnik 1. And that was ahead of American research, who was doing exactly the same. America was truly terrified. So what were they going to do? Well, they were still building their own ICBM program, but it was a few years off. So they turned to the science community and they turned specifically to this guy, Mr. Van Allen. And he described how our planet, the Earth, has a protective shield against the sun. So what do I mean against the sun? Because the sun is our star that gives us light and heat. But I think the best way of thinking about our sun, it's a bit like standing a rather too close to Chernobyl's meltdown core. From a distance, you see a beautiful blue glow and maybe a little heat on your cheeks. But get too close, and of course it's a radioactive nightmare. And that's the same as our sun. Okay, we perceive our sun's energy that it gives off as light in the electromagnetic spectrum and as heat, which is infrared that we can't perceive with our eyes, makes us warm, and it produces life on Earth. But the sun puts out loads of bad stuff that will definitely kill you. I'm talking about particles, actual radioactive lumps of stuff that go right through you. Highly charged particles and energy coming out of our sun. Cosmic rays. And that can destroy a planet. And through great luck or grand design, our planet Earth is magnetic, and it has magnetic fields which distort the cosmic rays and keep them away from Earth. There's two holes in it, one at the North Pole and one at the South Pole, and that's why we see Northern or Southern lights. But most of the bad stuff is deflected by the Van Allen belts. So while the Americans were still building their intercontinental ballistic nuclear missiles, basic science said it's possible that you could disrupt a Rusky missile by a magnetic defense shield around our Earth. Let's try and build one. So they did this exploding nuclear bombs in space. Project Starfish making rainbow glows over the Pacific. But what it was really doing is producing a charged magnetic band, which they hoped would stay there and mess up the electronics of any incoming missile. And as you know from this channel, how did they test whether this messing around with the ionosphere really worked? Oh, they had a large telescope in Puerto Rico called Arecibo. Yeah, that's what the Arecibo telescope was built for, to check whether Project Starfish and others was working to produce 
a defense shield. But it didn't work. It literally, it didn't work. The amount of energy and nuclear bombs you'd have to explode in our atmosphere to produce a defense shield permanently around the Earth just wasn't worth it. And they built the ICBMs anyhow. But it was great fun, and maybe messing around with our ionosphere could have another effect. Well, it does. They found it disrupted radio communication. Oh, that's a military asset. So they built stations like HARP and put the same equipment in Arecibo and pumped gigawatts of power into our ionosphere to produce maybe a band that would stop radio communication. And it did work. So they continued their experiment. At the same time, they invented VLF. That's very long frequency radio waves that can penetrate the ocean so you can communicate with submarines. And if you have control over VLF or even ELF, you can talk to your weapon system and block the others from communicating with theirs. And that's another part of this program. According to that bland little NASA video, it's the VLF signal and energy that's messed up our atmosphere and made a permanent, as they call, bubble around the Earth. So they've done it. But what are the consequences of messing with our protective Van Allen belts? And why has this research continued to this present day? Obviously, there's an effect which is measurable and it seems sneaked out. Under the shadow of the holiday season, NASA are now admitting that we have a man-made bubble around our Earth. The truth is out there.